You know how this goes. Got a cold start before we ride, so let's do it. Hi, I'm Chad, and welcome to another video. So today's video is all about motorcycle wheelie control. First, I'm going to give you a quick overview of wheelie control, how it works and the systems that enable it, and then I'm going to show you it in action. Now if this video does look familiar, it is because I made a How Wheelie Control Works video I think a year or two ago, but in the comments I got some feedback suggesting that I show wheelie control in action with different settings. So in that video, I didn't do it because there isn't really that much of a difference on the Aprilia. It's not like a Panigale V4 or a Yamaha R1 where the wheelie control levels make a significant difference in how much the wheelie control intervenes, but there are some minor differences and I will be sure to show you those this time around. Before I show you wheelie control in action, let me explain to you how wheelie control works and what makes it work. So if you're watching this video, you likely know that today's super bikes and really many new motorcycles of the modern age have a plethora of rider aids, which are electronic systems designed to make the motorcycle safer and easier to ride. Now my 2017 Aprilia Tuono V4 1100 factory here does have electronic rider aids, although they are based on systems that are pretty old at this point. They still work, they'll still keep you a little bit safer. Will they help you go faster? I don't really think so in most cases, but they're there and there are some that are very good. So these electronic systems are enabled by a bunch of electronic sensors on the motorcycle. For one, you have an electronic throttle here. So rather than having a set of steel cables that run down to the throttle bodies, you actually have a sensor up here in the throttle tube and then a wire that runs and connects to the ECU. So when you roll on the throttle, a signal is sent proportionately to the ECU causing the throttle bodies to open. And being that it is just an electrical wire, it is virtually instant. A lot of people say the throttle response on ride-by-wire throttles isn't quite as crisp as with the cable throttle. Crispness, I'd agree with you. Responsive, not so much. This is a very responsive throttle. So in addition to the electronic throttle, we also have wheel speed sensors on the front and the rear wheels of this motorcycle that are measuring how quickly the wheels are rotating as well as the variance in speed between the front and the rear wheel. And we have a six axis inertial measurement unit, which detects roll or lean angle, pitch, so forward, downward, and yaw, the left or right direction that you are traveling through space and time. So these are the main sensors from which the bike gathers data to understand what is happening in its current situation and whether or not based on your selected levels of rider assistance, it needs to intervene to help you out. So these sensors are always gathering data and trying to understand what is going on. So if you're doing a wheelie, for example, the bike is going to be pitched vertically or somewhat vertically and the IMU is going to detect that as well as the speed at which the front and rear wheel are traveling. So based on the pitch upward and whether or not the front and rear wheel are traveling at the same speed, the bike is going to determine if you are doing a wheelie, and then it is going to look at your throttle position, the engine speed and load, and it is going to override your throttle input. So while you may be holding your throttle in a constant position or even opening it more, the bike is going to close the throttle body slightly, thus limiting the engine's power output and bringing the front wheel back to the ground. Seems pretty straightforward, right? What makes the system on this Tuono V4, as well as many other newer motorcycles, very cool is the fact that these sensors and this combination of data, mostly enabled by the inertial measurement unit, can differentiate between a wheelie and a rear wheel slide. Because if you think about it, if you're just looking at wheel speed, a wheelie and a rear end slide can look similar, right? Because in both situations, the front wheel 
is spinning slower than the rear wheel. But again, because we have that inertial measurement unit, which is detecting whether the bike is banked over or how pitched upward it is, it's going to be able to say, hey, we're pretty upright. Front wheel's probably coming off the ground. I'm gonna intervene this way. Now, another cool feature here is that because of this IMU and that differentiation of data, you can adjust wheelie control and traction control independently on this motorcycle, although if you do disable traction control entirely, you also will disable wheelie control. But if you're riding without traction control, you probably don't need wheelie control anyways. So, fair point. But you can have wheelie control on a very high setting or invasive setting and traction control on a low setting or vice versa. Wheelie control on a low setting and traction control on a high setting. So very cool that you can really fine tune your rider aids and get the bike to help you in exactly the way that you want it to. If you want to get the front wheel up and off the ground a little bit more when you're on corner exit of the track and have more assistance in the corners with traction control, you can do that. Pretty neat. So now I hope you have a somewhat basic understanding of how wheelie control works because I'm going to show you it in action. But before I do, I will preface it with the fact that Aprilia's wheelie control, once again, is not the best reacting wheelie control system. This is not like a Panigale V4R or an R1 where you have wheelie control that will actually hold a wheelie for you for an extended period of time. In my experience, wheelie control, even on the least invasive setting, won't let you keep the front wheel in the air for more than two seconds. And it won't let you get it very high off the ground either. So in this application, think of it more as anti-wheelie than actual wheelie control. So first, we're gonna duck into virtual reality real quick. And now that we are in virtual reality, we are going to enable wheelie control. Now I've configured the left-hand switch over here on my bike today to control wheelie control. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the most invasive setting, which is level three on this bike. So I'm first going to show you an accelerating power wheelie in first gear, and then I will show you my attempt at a clutch up wheelie in second gear with each of these different wheelie control settings. So starting with three, which is the most invasive, we're gonna work our way down to two, then to one. Then we might just do one with no wheelie control just to show you the difference. So see, pretty aggressive. That was with setting three and it basically chopped the gas really hard as soon as I got the front wheel off the ground. Not a pleasant experience. That kind of hurt. So yeah, very invasive on setting three, the highest. Let's try a clutch up, although this is kind of scaring me if I'm being honest now. I got the front end off the ground a little bit, but I didn't even change my throttle position and it brought the front wheel back down basically right away. So now we're gonna turn it down to two. Let's see how that changes things. of intervention there because I didn't walk the throttle as hard the front wheel hardly came off the ground at all but you see that didn't even move my right hand and it just kept cutting wheel would touch down and come back up cut again over and over and over and over not very smooth all right second gear clutch up Wheelie control on two. Still not giving me much. Not all that different from having wheelie control on three. All right, now let's try one. Wheelie control down to one. Once again, very invasive. Give me just a little bit more play there, but it repeatedly intervened. 
and made for a not smooth wheelie that did not last very long. Even though there were lots of little skippy wheelies in between. Alright, second gear clutch up, wheelie control on one. Still didn't give me much. And I assure you, I did not touch the rear brake. Alright, so now we're going to turn wheelie control off entirely. No more wheelie control. There's a little first gear roll on action. And the big reason I came back down is because I intervened with the rear brake myself. So it is nice that you can disable the system entirely and just take your fate into your own hands if you're so inclined. And it is cool too that you can disable wheelie control while still having traction control on, as I do right now. So as you saw, it'll still let you get the front wheel off the ground. That's that IMU coming into play, differentiating a wheelie from a rear end slide and letting you do it. Although I have heard that if you do a wheelie that lasts for more than 10 seconds on a 210 V4 or a bike with APRC, and you have traction control on, even on the lowest setting, but wheelie control off, at about 10 seconds, it will intervene and bring you back down violently. So if I'm virtually trying to do my best wheelies, I like to turn traction control off. Easy as that. And then with none of the electronic aids, you can do it like that. Which, when you have the experience, is a lot more fun. It's a very important takeaway here. These electronic rider aids are here for your safety. They are there to help you tame an insane motorcycle like this that really has no proper place on public roads. And to help you, in a lot of cases, go faster and feel more confident on the racetrack, which is really where a bike like this belongs. So if you do want to take it upon yourself to play around with these different settings or even turn them off entirely, I highly recommend you do it on a racetrack or some sort of closed course and not on public roads. And as I mentioned before, the entirety of this video from the time that I set it has been in virtual reality, which is a highly detailed computer simulation that represents the actual world in a very realistic format. And with that, we're back to reality. And I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. So thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, found it helpful and insightful, I would sincerely appreciate a gentle little click of the like button. And if you consider subscribing for more motorcycling content like this, and drop a comment below. What do you think about wheelie control? Have you ever experienced it before? Or do you own a motorcycle with wheelie control? Do you use it? Don't you use it? On what level do you use it? Let's talk about it in the comments. Thanks again for watching, and I'll hope to catch you in the next one. Until then, later.